Okay, you can cut that. That's enough foolery. Yeah. Are y'all familiar with Trina? Do y'all know Trina, Queen of the South? Give it up. Make some noise if you know Trina, if you're familiar with Trina. Oh, that's yes. So, like, legit, that's one of my favorite songs that Trina does. Like, you see, she gets straight into it, right? Slap it in my face, shove it down my throat. Wish blunt at, I'ma make this pussy smoke. First of all, ma'am, y'all better not smack shit in my face. I have bad skin already, okay? I am dealing with adult onset acne. <laughs> And y'all do not keep, kidding. yeah, y'all do not keep y'all dicks clean enough to be putting it on in my face. I'm a star crunch penis. You should not have that many bumps. The fuck do you want to put it in? You want to slap it in my face, then shove it down my throat? I have an awful gag reflex. I can't even brush my teeth in the morning without like it almost being an accident. You got uh, two of those, two of those. The third one is a completely different situation, okay? And then like the, the last word, the, the last little line of that, that first stanza, she says, where's your blunt at? I can make my pussy smoke. I kind of want to see that. <laughs> like I've been practicing my kegels ever since that song came out and I was in the ninth grade. You know, you know, I think I can do it or whatever, but I never wanted to waste weed. You know, like weed is my ministry. That's how I fellowship. Like if I got weed, y'all got weed. Kind of like HPV, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, so I mean, yeah, you, you're laughing because you know it's true. Any medical health professionals in here can back me up right now? <laughs> you're like, uh, maybe, I don't know. I, I got rid of mine. Lie. You <laughs> How y'all doing tonight? Oh, it feels good to be back here. I ain't been on this stage in a long time, probably since pre-pandemic. I got shit that I want to say to y'all, but I didn't memorize it, so y'all gonna deal with this. Everybody else been putting that shit down and like kind of glancing over at it. That's because they're real comedians. I play around with this shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, um, yeah. So like, I don't. I, I gave up men for Lent like six years ago. <laughs> I've never like re -dabble. I'm lying, I be fucking sometimes. Like I dibble, I dibble and dabble and dig from time to time. But like I said before, y'all do not take care of y'all shit. Like y'all, y'all treat y'all cars way better than y'all treat y'all dicks. You know, like if, if your, your car, like it start leaking or whatever, like you'll take it to the motherfucking mechanic. But if your dicks start leaking, you'll make an excuse. You're like, oh no, all dicks do this. No motherfucker, it should not be green. What the hell? ever got it from fucking with a man besides chlamydia. I'll wait. I'm still waiting. Yeah. Somebody got a napkin, my nose is running. I don't even do coke. I'm like, it's just a little bit. No, I really need a napkin. Everybody laughing at me and I'm about to put like COVID all over the microphone. Jeff Blank gonna be all fucked up tomorrow. Thank you. I like y'all. We can smoke together after this. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> but dead ass, I want to give it up for our host tonight. Y'all give it up for Justin Mays. <laughs> Don't Justin look like he can tell you that he having an earth herpes outbreak before he trying to fuck? I like that in a man. I like that level of transparency. You know, like, okay, baby, not tonight. Let in a week, I'll holler at you. <laughs> Man, I used to tell a joke about sucking dick, but what's real is I don't like, I just really don't like sucking dick. First of all, I don't think that men deserve it. I don't think that men are, exactly. Like, I, I don't think, I think that like sucking dick is a reward and y'all don't do enough. Y'all just, it's just not enough happening in the atmosphere right now. Like, <laughs> sucking dick is kind of like eating crab legs to me. It's like too much work, not enough reward. So I just don't do it. You know, like I don't eat crab legs, I don't suck dick. <laughs> it makes it difficult to date. <laughs> At least it doesn't take, you know what it is longer, it takes longer to eat crab legs than it does to suck a dick. For sure. Okay, y'all got one. Yeah. <laughs> See you boys up. <laughs> oh, y'all see my knee? 
Y'all see. Everybody say, oh. Yeah, y'all wanna know what happened? Yeah. Anybody go to Big Ears? Clap it up if you went to Big Ears. Woo! Two of you. Okay, we was there together. Did y'all go see Sons of Kemet? You're like, who the fuck is that? Black people, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> I went to go see this jazz band called Sons of Kemet, and I'm standing there. It was a crowd kind of like this, warm crunchy though. Like, you know, like everybody had like some kombucha and kimchi, you know, like, yeah. So like, I don't know if y'all have ever been to Mill and Mine, but swear to God, I thought it was like the Travis Scott concert. They had this like gate up, you know, before you get to the stage and you gotta stand behind the gate before the band goes. So I'm like, I'm standing there and I'm talking to a friend and my friend tells me, he's like, as soon as they move these gates, I'm running. And I'm like, okay, it's like a hundred feet. It's won't be a big deal or whatever. Wrong. So fucking wrong. They moved those gates and then white people started running. <laughs> and I go to turn and I get knocked over and trampled. I'm talking about motherfuckers running all over me. Fucked up my favorite shirt and busting my knee up. Oh, it's fucked up, right? Ain't that a good story? I really just fell. I just fell down. I'm clumsy as shit. <laughs> and I fell hard. 257 pounds landed right on my knee. Ain't been right ever since. But I like telling people that I got trampled by white people at Mill and Mine because it makes y'all feel bad. You know? Like, you can be like, oh, I gotta be better about my proximity when black people are around. You know, I don't want nobody to get trampled around here. People move out of my way now. I like it. <laughs> So like when uh, he said, like anybody ever been to the Travis Scott? I'm like, I wanna say yes, because that's what I felt like I was in. Like honestly, but it was more of like the cast of like Friends and Seinfeld. <laughs> they were violent too, what do you mean? <laughs> Let's see, um, <clears throat> oh, I, had, I did have COVID. Yep, I had COVID at the top of February and it took me out for a complete month. I never had COVID before until this year. And I'm sure it was like a conglomeration of all the motherfucking variants that was out. And like, I wasn't raised in a household like where my people, like my family, my mother, like really loved me and cared for me. So I'm like, self-care or like taking care of children is like, okay, you drink some ginger ale, go lay your ass down. You know, that's it. Like, you're like, oh, but I broke my ankle. And if you drink some ginger ale and sat your ass down, it wouldn't hurt. That's how I was raised. So when I moved down to Knoxville, and I'm like, I developed community when I got sick. Like, I had just posted on Facebook because I shared everything. And I was like, oh, y'all, I'm sick. I got COVID. And everybody's like, oh, my God, Brittany, what do you need? And I'm like, shit, well, my cash app is. <laughs> you know, like, if y'all really want to help, you know, they're like, oh, no, like, let us feed you because I have children. They're like, let us feed you. And I'm like, okay, well, here's the address. Just drop some stuff off. You know what the fuck they brought? Soup. I wish it was a casserole. I will fuck up a casserole. Black people talk shit about casseroles, but white people, y'all did y'all shit with casserole. I love some shit that you just mix all together and you get everything on one motherfucking bite. Yes! I love a casserole. I wish they would have brought me fucking casseroles, but that's not what happened. They brought me fucking soup. And I hate soup. I hate all kinds of soup. I was homeless for a long time. I ate out of a lot of soup kitchens. You know what the fuck they serve in soup kitchens? Soup, fuck that shit. It's like hot vegetable poverty water. Fuck you, keep that shit to yourself. I don't want friends like that no more. Like, again, my cash app is <laughs> fucking Brandy and Gustus. Let me buy my own shit. Maybe I can do a chowder or a chili, but y'all keep that brothy shit. I don't like fucking bone broth, bone marrow soup. I'm like, no, we, this is not fucking Willy Wonka times. I am not Uncle Joe. Keep your fucking cabbage soup shit. God, but I love my friends. I do, but I try to until they do shit like that. Ugh. Well, are y'all having fun at this summertime showcase? It confused me that it was a summer sub showcase and sweating. Wasn't it just snowing last week? I was very confused, but I'm like, white people do what the fuck y'all want, so go ahead, go off. It's the summer showcase number one. <laughs> But like every time I think of summer, I think of three very distinct things. First of all, I look great in shorts. <laughs> Aluminum free deodorant is not my friend. <laughs> not in the summer, not in the summer. I be trying to like save the planet and shit, and I'm like, nah, fuck y'all. Like I'm getting all this shit under my heart. Or I don't want to be the stinky bitch. Like, you know, I don't want to be the motherfucker and be like, yeah, I went to the comedy show and that stinky black girl was really funny. 
I just don't want that label, you know? And then the last thing that Summer reminds me of is like, I don't have flashable titties. I know, it's, it's sad. It is a very sad experience. I did that shit, I'm tired, drunk. Okay, I told y'all, weed is my ministry. I drink when the drinking is free. You get me comment? That's why I do this shit. I only come here to drink for free. Fuck these jokes. Like, where's my PBR? <laughs> but like, I was drunk on the top of Market Square. You know what? This is another reason why I gotta stop drinking. I usually suck dick on the top of Market Square when I'm drunk. <laughs> It's not me, it's not me. Brandy don't suck dick, but Katrina, she is a big slut, okay? And like, you get her inebriated even slightly, and she just like sucking all the dicks in the room. It's awful, God. We've been so sick the last few years. <laughs> I, was on, I was at the, um, not even Top of Market Square Garage, but I was at like Prez Pub on the roof, you know how they got all that shit or whatever, and I was talking to this guy, and I had like a low cut shirt, and we was like kind of flirting or whatever, and he said something about titties, and I was like, oh, I got those, you know? And he was like, let me see them. And you know, we were talking about areolas, and I was like, my areolas are big, they're kind of like saucers, like, you know, you can set a teacup on them, you know? <laughs> and he was like, no, they're not, nobody's areolas are that big, and I felt like that was a challenge. <laughs> so I took my titty out, and then when it hit the floor, <laughs> he just kind of looked at me and walked away. And I realized as I was rolling my TV back up and putting it back in my bra that I should never do that again. <laughs> Sometimes you come to these realizations about yourself. Another realization that I had about dating. Okay, you know like how people say, I do not want to date people that have children. I get that, I'm not mad at that. I am not mad at that at all, because what's real is, I don't want to date a motherfucker with parents. <laughs> if you have both parents and they love your ass, you can stay the fuck far away from me. Okay, I don't need that type of negativity in my life. Your mama stalking me on Facebook and shit. No, no. If you got children, swipe, I, will, I mean, parents, I will swipe the fuck, and they have a picture of them? How dare you? You will never get this pussy. Yeah. Now your daddy might, because I know his parents probably got one. <laughs> I am definitely, definitely at that age where I can fuck anybody's like, I can fuck you or I can fuck your daddy. It's, and I'm here for, or your mama, what she look like? She's single? You know, like, uh, you know, uh, oh shit. <laughs> All right, well, now that we got that out the way, <laughs> anybody got single parents? Oh, y'all don't want me to fuck your parents? Selfish? How fucking selfish are y'all? Whatever, anybody got kids? Any, am I the only one? Okay. You were more excited about dating big ears than you were your children. I just wanna go ahead and name that. You're like, yeah, I got them motherfuckers. I created people. God, I got kids. I, I have a 16-year-old and a 12-year-old. Don't look it, do I? Black don't cry. Yeah, <laughs> y'all know, y'all know. But yeah, I got a 16-year-old and a 12-year-old. And like I said before, like I wasn't really raised in the most like loving of households. So I made it a point that when I became a parent that I was gonna support my children through anything. And when my youngest son decided that he wanted to play football, I'm like, all right, yes, like, let's do it. I'm not athletic at all, but I can go out and support you to the best of my ability. So we did the equipment, bought the $175 cleats. I'm like, why the fuck do shoes cost that much and you wear them once a week? But okay, whatever, I don't know shit about sports. Whatever, we get out there for his scrimmage and this little motherfucker quits in the middle of his scrimmage. He realizes that hitting motherfuckers in the heat is not for him. <laughs> and I wasn't mad at him at all, but I'm like, as we walking back to the car, and I'm like, I told him, I was like, I'm proud of you for trying. If you ever wanna go back out there, you know we can hit up practices again, but I do want you to know that you will be wearing them fucking $175 cleats to the first day of seventh grade. Okay, so you are like, if anybody is familiar with Vine, if you hear walking around the house, that's my son. That's a <laughs> now my oldest son, my oldest son is 16, and that, I, like, 
the respect that I have for this little motherfucker, like, because I could not live and be my truest self growing up. Like, my mom ain't like that shit. Like, I had to be her, do what she wanted me to do, and, like, keep the peace. So when my son came out, he was, like, maybe 13 or 14, he was like, Mom, I think I'm non-binary. And I didn't know what the fuck that meant. So I'm like, okay, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, one. It's some math shit, right? And he was like, no, no, it's... I just really feel like I don't, I don't fit either of the genders that are like, you know, put out there. It was like, I kind of just feel like, you know, I don't, it, it doesn't fit. I'm like, well, whatever the fuck you want to do, you let me know what we got to do. So we cut his hair and all that shit or whatever. And then like a year later, he was like, you know what? I think I'm trans. And I was like, well, that made more sense. All right, let's do it. Like, you know, so <laughs> we got him, we started him on tea and all that shit. And, you know he's living his fullest life. He is, I mean, talk about happy as hell. I'm struggling because now this motherfucker's going through his second puberty and nobody told me how to prepare for this shit. There is no trans parenting guide. You know, because like, your motherfucking parents fucked it all up. If we was more accepted back in the day, then this shit would be a breeze right now. But right now, I'm kind of struggling. So, I'm like, uh, a couple months into his transition, you know, um, his therapist was like, you should really get him some like gender affirming items. And I'm like, what the fuck do you mean? <laughs> you know, you gotta be specific with me. Like, you know, let's be clear. And, and she's like, Packers. You know, Packers are pieces of equipment that help trans boys feel more like at, at home in their bodies. And I was like, all right, cool, show me the link. It's dicks. I don't know if anybody ever told y'all what a packer was. It is nothing but a dick. I'm sitting on my bed with my 15-year-old looking at dicks, waiting on Chris Hansen to jump through the window with motherfucking cookies, talking about have a seat. You know, but, but, but we got it. You know, we did it. I mean, it was a very hard situation to process through. But we did it, and now he got his dick, and he be wearing it, and I just be okay. But then... But then he told me, he was like, yeah, you know, I got a lot of online friends and I think I'm a furry. And I'm like, well, what the fuck is that? You know, I'm like, hey. he was like, you know, no, we just like get together, like we role play, we get online. And like, so I would really like it if you bought me like these ears and this tail. And I was like, mm, I mean, I guess I could do that. I'm like, it fits in the budget. You know, thinking to myself that this was an inside thing. And I realized, like, I had told him, I'm like, okay, let's go clothes shopping, let's go get some shit for school before it starts. And he goes and he was like, oh, let me grab my things. And in my head, I'm thinking, like, oh, he left his dick. Like, you know, you gotta go grab your dick, gotta go back in the house, grab your dick. <laughs> and he comes out and he got his ears on, and I was like, okay, wait a minute, Morgan. But he turns around and see, he got his ears and his tail. And I was like, you know what the fuck? You can take your dick or your tail, but you can't take both to West Town Mall. That's not... <laughs> he definitely chose his tail. There was priorities. <laughs> All right, y'all. I am Brandy Augustus. That is my time. Y'all can follow me on social media at my name. Brandy Augustus!